Welcome back to another RaceRex track exam. This time we are staying East Coast, heading to Nashville for the final East Coast round of 2023. Joining me today, coming fresh off a career best, insane sixth place in the 450 class in the disgusting New England chowder that was Saturday night, Twisted THEP Suzuki's own. Shane McElrath, thanks for joining me to break down Nashville. Heck yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, I finally got all cleaned up from all that mud. <laughs> Uh, in New Jersey. It was it was a mess. Oh, no thanks. So first, congratulations. Season best, career best. What Thank was, you. So uh, we head back to Nissan Stadium this weekend. Second time ever racing there. We raced here in 2019, but that year you were actually racing mm -hmm. West Coast for TLD KTM. Mm -hmm. The plan was to alternate Nashville and St. Louis every other year, but obviously 2020 happened, kind of goofed up that little schedule, but we're finally coming back. Going to be a day race going to be open air stadium mm -hmm. might have some rain on the forecast but let's get to the track map what is the very first thing that stands out to you when you look at this track map for the first time um for me i i got i got wind of uh of some rain and i i'm just started praying for rain it's like you know what if if we're gonna do it let's do it um honestly for me the first thing that stands out on the track map is um it's not one long whoop section but it's it looks like a dragon's back into a whoop section which is um it looks like there's a lot of whoops there but i don't know this floor stadium the the actual size of it like if, if it were glendale and we seen this it'd be like dude you'd have a five whoop dragons back and still a 15 whoop whoop section so um but this one it honestly looks uh looks pretty good i think they have uh, eight or nine whoops there um in the actual set but um, the other thing is the the split sand section. I don't really know how that's going to work. I don't know what kind of sand they're going to bring in for that. If it's like Tampa powdery, like flower sand, or if it's like um, Atlanta was was a little bit more coarse. Um, that's that's kind of like here in Florida. We you have the east coast of Florida and you have the west coast of Florida, and and those are two different types of sand. So. I don't know what kind of sand they're they're thinking about bringing in, but um, honestly, it looks it looks like a good open racetrack. It's not too too tight to where it's just a bunch of ninety degrees. Kind of like a baseball stadium can be. You have turns that are over ninety degrees, but um, this one looks like it's a, a good layout for racing. And I know the last time they raced in Nashville, um, it was a little bit harder base. Um, so depending on how the weather is there this week and uh, what they can do with the track. I don't know uh, if it were dry. I, I plan for it to be hard packed um, kind of more like a, a West coast track or even Glendale. But with this one, um, I think it's kind of going to be uh, what, what the weather gives us is really going to kind of determine how the track's going to race. Let's stay with this split lane sand section. Um, Same on the mm -hmm. inside of the corner, rollers or maybe little singles on the outside. We had a split lane this past weekend, mm -hmm. didn't really work out. Everyone stayed inside, whether it was wet or dry. Do you think we can get two viable lines this weekend? Um, I think from from what we can see, like in Glendale, when it's when it's true split lanes where they have hay bales down the middle, um, this one I don't know if they have the space to do that. Um, from what it looks like, it looks like it's the standard width. Um, but to have two different soil types there without uh, bells separating them, I think that could, um, obviously the, the good line looks like jump straight to the inside, then drift wide and then cut back to the right and miss both of the big walls. But I don't, I don't imagine that that's, that's going to be a, a true line. So, um, Honestly, for how open that first corner looks, I think if you can break up your momentum sooner, and what I mean by that is going through the sand, hitting the first wall, and then you can drive off that and hit the little, the smaller single, I think that's going to be um, a good break momentum wise because the, where the turn, where the, the outside wall is, I think that is maybe just in a little bit of a weird spot uh, to break up your momentum. It's like, okay, you're not really going that fast around the corner before it. And then you're kind of dancing through the sand. Then you, you actually stop your momentum and hit the wall. Whereas in this 
situation. It's like if you can, if you're having to break your momentum, try and find one spot to break it all. And then the rest you can, you can carry as much momentum as possible. And to me, I think just looking at the track map, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, but we'll have to see exactly how that, that section is built. Fair. So looking at the start, we've had uh, relatively long starts the last couple of weeks, but we're finally mm -hmm. back to a, let's yep. call it a medium length. But this is actually mm -hmm. our first and only right-hand start of the year. How different is that doing the right-hand start? And how often do you practice something like that, if at all? Uh, yeah, I would say I, I don't know that a lot of us practice that. Um, it's It's definitely different, I think. I think this is where some guys maybe shut off and go straight for I maybe they're just always focused on the whole shot and it's like this is one of those starts where it's like you do a start like this like you ride a really technical track it's not just super fast and break super hard it's like you're either going to break hard or you're going to turn good like you, you almost can't do both in this situation so um kind of like how the last couple of weeks we've had really good start or really long starts. And a lot of the whole shots have been coming from like the right side of the box for a left-handed corner. And in this one, it's like, it's almost like a lot of people would stay to the right side of the box so that they can drive in and make sure that they break super hard, even if they have to break early, because if somebody out drives them from the outside, they're just going to have to keep going. Like they, they can't turn really good and get on the brakes hard. So um, I think we're kind of going to see a switch up on where the, the whole shots come from this week, um, just for the sake of protecting that inside and making sure that they try to get through the, that first turn clean. So we're going straight into uh, first corner launches straight into that rhythm. How do you think that first rhythm section plays out? Are we going to go probably table on, table off, or are you thinking about going over the table? Um, what it, it looks like is that there's a little bit of a lip on the off of the table. I don't know if that's supposed to be like that, uh, but sometimes kind of like back at uh, the Triple Crown at Anaheim, uh, the jump that Tomat crashed on, like one of those tabletops where it's like, okay, that you have – what's essentially like a five footer off the tabletop then you have a three footer and then another five footer. So I don't know that that's necessarily possible, but it could be what they're wanting to do in that rhythm. Um, if not, it's with how open that corner is, you can't really set up for it to, to go over, I guess. Like you almost have to rush it a little bit and just get on and then the off is what actually starts your rhythm. So it's just on off. And then you push really hard through the, the, the big, big, small, and then you can just three, five, three out. Um, that seems like a really, um, not safe option, but a consistent option, especially kind of backing up a little bit with how the section is before it. Like if you go outside there, somebody's going to, dart down the inside and then you're both going to go on off anyway. So, um, I think that's, that's, a a good consistent race option when you're around guys. So on the other side of the floor, we have a full length rhythm section. What, uh, what rhythm are you look, are you eyeing up for that one? Um, this one is a little bit different. Um, it's especially with the racing now, we tend to find ourselves always going to the inside in 90 degree corners. Like you, you almost can't afford to leave the inside open there. Like it's, it's super easy and super short to block somebody. And with this rhythm also though, it, it looks like a, a three footer and then a four or five, but a ski, uh, a forward ski onto a table. So it's in that scenario, it's almost like, you can't really go. And then after the table, it looks like another five footer. So, uh, or at least a, a big uh, reverse ski. So I think it's probably going to be a little bit tough to get off that table. Um, so it's almost like the best bet is either 
double over the big one out of the inside and then go table single. Um, that doesn't really set you up good for the rest of the rhythm. But again, that 90, if we're just jumping to the inside, you roll the first one and then you could go over the table off of the, this, the forward ski and then you triple off the, the reverse ski, um, the backside of it. And then you three, five, three into the sand is what it looks like. And whether there's that next little bump in the sand on the inside, I'm not sure. Um, but really for me, what I'm looking at in these rhythms is how can I miss the big jumps uh, or the, the taller jumps. And if I do have to hit them, how can I get through there the most efficient way? So that's, that's kind of what uh, I'm looking for really is if we have to hit the big jumps, what is the, what is the best way to hit them? So you mentioned earlier about the bull turn into the dragon's back, a little run into the whoop section mm -hmm. and another bull turn. Is this going to be the most crucial mm -hmm. part of the layout? Lots of passes happening in that and those two corners in that straightaway. Yeah, I think so. Um, and this corner also looks a lot more open. Like we, we had the, the tight corner after the whoops this weekend in New Jersey, but that was more like a half berm because of the, where the start was. And it was kind of going the opposite way. Whereas this one, you almost get a full berm in the corner after the whoops. And that, that leaves a lot of room because like, if you really came on the inside of somebody this past weekend in New Jersey, like you, you could essentially hit them head on. Like that, that was how tight you had to, to turn out of the corner. Whereas this one, um, you definitely have some room to go and block somebody on the outside or even square somebody up um, if, say, if you're on the outside coming down the whoops. So um, I think this this track, like we do have the half berm before the finish, but that's that's almost more uh, consistent or more anticipated um, on a corner like that because it's like, okay, I can drive in straight. Um, and catch the berm good, or I can drive a little a little bit wider coming in and make sure that I really roll through the corner. But um, you can play a little offense or defense in a corner like that. All right, so last one. Last week, Anderson was the fastest mm -hmm. qualifier with a 47.7. What is your best guess? Mm -hmm. What's the fastest 450 lap time in qualifying going to be on this one? Hmm. Um, if, it's, if it's dry... I'm going to say it's going to be a 51.3. And if it's wet, I'm going to say we're going to be um, a 59.7. All right. Love it. Uh, before we wrap this up, Shane, let the fans know where can they follow you and where can they learn more about your program as well as how can they support your program? Cool. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm really trying to to grow my Instagram right now. Um, I have kind of been shadow banned on there for many years. So um, I'm trying to engage in that. And I have a full-time media guy who's also, um, we're doing some YouTube videos once a week. Uh, my Instagram is Shane McElrath underscore um, my YouTube. I don't know exactly. Oh, it's just the McElraths. Um, but th those are really like the main places we're trying to to push and trying to grow. Um, I want to I want to keep people um, up to date on what what we're doing and where we're at. And it's really tough to do that by myself. So, like I said, we have we have a media guy now and he lives with us and um, that's, that's his full-time job. So, um, yeah, I just, I really appreciate everybody coming by in the pit saying, Hey, coming to the autograph line and yeah, uh, check us out on the socials. Great, man. Well, I appreciate you Shane for joining me for this edition of racer X track exam. Thank you for watching as well at home and be sure to visit racerxonline.com for all your motocross and supercross news. All right, buddy.